Welcome back Commodore fans. Today's video will show you how to use wildcard characters on Commodore computers with the 1541 or compatible floppy drive. I got my 1541 floppy drive back in 1984 and I did read the manual which included a few paragraphs about wildcards. But in truth I was just so happy to have a random access device instead of a slow tape drive that I largely ignored wildcards and only really started using them in recent years. So let's get right into it. There are two wildcard characters you can use with the 1541 or compatible disk drive. First there is a star, or asterisk if you prefer. Please note, for the rest of this video I'm going to be using the word star to describe the asterisk character, because in the context of computers this is what it's most often called. With that said, the star is a wildcard character to that, that is used to denote any string of characters. And second is the question mark, which denotes any single character. Let's start with something familiar. Everyone should know the command load star comma 8 and load star comma 8 comma 1. These commands will load the first program on a disk and is used to load most commercial software. This command is so common that pretty much all of the fast loader cartridges have a built-in shortcut for it. Besides using a star to load the first program on the disk, you can also use it in directory listings to only display files that match the pattern. Let's start with a typical directory listing command. Load dollar sign comma 8. This will load the entire directory and it will overwrite any basic program already in memory so be sure you have your work saved before issuing the command. When loaded, you list it to see the files. As you can see there are quite a few files on this disk and it scrolls off the top of the screen. So I have to either slow it down with the control key or press the stop key when I see what I'm looking for. Now let's say I want to see only programs that start with the letter R. I would construct my load command like this. Load dollar sign colon the letter R star comma 8. When we list it we see that there are four files that begin with the letter R. This is much more efficient as I see only the files I was searching for. You can also use a question mark as a wildcard to denote a single character. So let's construct a load command where the second letter of the file must be the letter E. So we load dollar sign colon question mark the letter E star comma 8. And listing it we see that there are five files that have the letter E as a second character. Between the star and question mark wildcard characters you can construct a list command to filter the directory to your advantage. So that's how it works in basic. Next let's try the original wedge program by going all the way back to the original 1541 test demo disk. This disk contains various programs that let you either test or demonstrate features of the 1541 drive. We're going to use the C64 wedge program. So let's load it and list it to see what's going on. Okay, it just loads another program called DOS 5.1 and launches it. Nothing to really see, so let's go ahead and run it. First, we see the copyright notice. It was written in 1982 by Bob Fairbairn or Fairbairn. I hope I pronounced that correctly, Bob. First, let's try just a dollar sign for a directory listing, as that is a common shortcut in fast loader utilities. Okay, well that didn't work, but I didn't really expect it to. Anyway, pretty much all wedge programs use either a greater than sign or an at sign to issue disk commands. So I'll use a greater than sign. And there you go. Next, let's use a star to find all programs that start with the letter H. Awesome. Now we'll add a question mark to see all files where the second letter of the file name is an O. Great. I'm glad to see that the original DOS wedge program incorporated wildcards. This C64 wedge program was most likely used as the basis for future fast loader cartridges that contain a DOS wedge, as they all use the same command format. The only real problem with this wedge program is that you have to load it from disk to use it, 
instead of having it always available as you do with a cartridge-based utility. Moving on, let's try some of the popular cartridge-based fastloader utilities that also contain DOS directory commands and shortcuts. First up is my personal favorite, the Epix Fastload cartridge. Fastload uses just a dollar sign to display a directory listing. So let's see if we can apply a wildcard to it using the same example as before. No, that doesn't appear to work. However, fastload disk commands are issued using either a greater than symbol or an at sign. So let's try an at sign. Success! That works. Now let's add a question mark. Which also works. I knew fastload wouldn't let me down. Next up is the Super Snapshot Cartridge by LMS Technologies. Super Snapshot also uses just the dollar sign to display a directory, so we'll try adding a wildcard to just a dollar sign first. Awesome, that works. Let's see if it also works with an at sign, and also add in the question mark. And it does. That's great that it works either way. Next up, the Access Mach 5 cartridge. Like the others, the Mach 5 cartridge also uses a dollar sign to display a directory. So let's try the wildcard with just a dollar sign. And okay, well that's not a file listing. That's a number conversion. Let's try using an at sign. That's still not it. Seems like that's a shortcut for opening a file but still no directory listing. I'm going to have to go back and recheck the manual. Here is the help display that shows the Mach 5 commands. I couldn't find anything here or in the manual that mentions the use of wildcards. You would have to revert to the basic load command. So why is Mach 5 not compatible with wildcards? I don't know. Anyway, if I'm wrong here or somehow missed it, feel free to leave a comment telling us all how to use wildcards with Mach 5. Other hardware and software utilities, such as Jiffy DOS and Basic Aid, also worked well with wildcard characters. And finally, let's take a look at the Commodore 128. The 128 has two built-in directory commands called Catalog and Directory. Let's try using wildcards with them. I'll try Catalog, since that's what I use most often. I'll enclose the wildcard character in quotes, just like the basic load command. And that works. A quick check with the question mark. Also works. And that concludes the 128 portion of this video. My apologies if I didn't test or mention your favorite utility. I was trying to use the popular stuff from the 80s. Give your favorite a mention in the comments, especially if it's for the 128. I'm always interested in seeing cool stuff for Commodore computers. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and be careful out there.